Hello and welcome back to our uh, look at Honduras. This is part two where we uh, take a look at the players. Um, we're going to organize this by uh, separating players into positions, which is a bit artificial because players do move around in their positions, but at least it uh, kind of allows us to uh, structure the discussion. So let us begin uh, with the manager. Um, the manager right now is Fabian Coito. He has been with the Honduras national team in uh, since 2019. Uh, George Luis Pinto was the manager until 2017. He's actually uh, uh, coached a lot of teams. He was manager of Honduras and Costa Rica and Colombia, Costa Rica twice, actually. Now he's with the uh, UAE national team, the United Arab Emirates. And uh, between him were kind of two uh, managers, George Jimenez and Carlos Tablora. Uh, neither of them lasted long. And I think Jimenez, uh, who was there before Coito, um, was uh, an in interim manager. Uh, so Coito is, uh, has been manager. He took them to the 2019 Gold Cup and actually uh, survived as a manager despite them not passing the group stage. And uh, before that, he was with the Uruguay national team as an interim manager. I'm a bit confused by that because uh, Oscar Tavares has been Uruguay's manager for a long time, but perhaps he took over um, to help out with Tabarez's debilitating disease. Um, so maybe just helping out there. Uh, let's move on now to uh, goalkeepers. And uh, really, there really is just one. There's no one other than Luis Lopez there. Uh, the two that were on the team in 2019 are gone, and the two that were here in 2021 are brand new, uh, and they're also a bit old. So it's a bit alarming that they only have the one keeper uh, kind of on the slate. Let's take a look at him. Luis uh, Lopez is uh, 27 years old. He plays in Honduras, but uh, was loaned to... Uh, Los Angeles FC in 2018, and he's actually been on the team for quite a while. In 2014 World Cup, 2015 Gold Cup, he was the backup keeper, and then in 2017, he played all four games as he did in 2019. So he saved a penalty uh, in the recent cup against Qatar, and um, uh, he seems to be their keeper going forward. Uh, but there is a bit of a worry about uh, what would happen if he was injured or unavailable. Um, two of the candidates that were on the team in 2021 were Edric uh, Menvar, Menjivar. He's 28 years old and plays in Honduras. And uh, Marlon, uh, sorry, Marlon Lacona. He's 30 years old and also plays in Hondura, Honduras uh, at Motagua. Um, they were brought in for this tournament, um, but they don't look like they'll be long-term kind of uh, backup keepers or the kind of keeper that would take over once Lopez is gone. In 2019, it was uh, Harold Fonseco. Um, that was the only Gold Cup he played in, as well as Rafael Zuniga. Uh, he played in 2019, but basically that was the only time he showed up. Uh, it's kind of a similar situation in central defense. Uh, Maynor Figueroa and Henry Figueroa were the two, uh, the two, the partnership that led them through a lot of the recent cups together. But uh, Henry Figueroa, though he's the younger of the two, was absent uh, this time. And I don't know if that means uh, he's kind of uh, not with the team anymore or what happened there. He'll certainly be the main man if he's available. In the meantime, Kevin Alvarez was brought in. Uh, he was in the cold for five years, not with the team for five years, but brought in to replace uh, Henry Figueroa. But he's really a right defender. So uh, Pereira there, Marcelo Pereira, 
uh, played a lot of the games in the lead up to the Gold Cup. He played 10 of their 13 games, but he was not used here. Um, despite being on the team. A uh, bit of a closer look at these players now. Maynard Figueroa is 38 years old. He's the captain of the team with a stunning one, 168 caps. He's been playing since 2003. So uh, he will likely be the central defender through this period, uh, through these qualifications. But they'll obviously have to start looking for uh, more uh, Figueroa plays for Houston Dynamo in the United States, and he's been in, in countless tournaments um, and captain, it seems, since about 2015. Uh, Henry Figueroa uh, plays in Honduras, and he was with the team in 2015, 17, and 19, a starter in all cups. So you can see those two have uh, been a staple at the back and like with the goalie it looks like they haven't really uh, prepared other players to step into their shoes once they're gone uh, kevin alvarez as i said is a right defender he's been with the team since 2015 and is 24 years old but the 2021 gold cup was his first cup uh he got his first cap in 2015 and then um, was absent for five years and called in, probably called in because Henry Figueroa wasn't available. And uh, maybe the player that will step into their shoes is Marcelo Pereira. He's 26 years old and has been with the team since 2016. Also plays in Honduras. He was on the Gold Cup squad in 2017, but he didn't see any action there. And he was selected for the preliminary squad in 2019, but didn't make it. But as I said, he played uh, 10 of their 13 games uh in the build-up to the tournament and uh, it looks like they're going to need him because he seems to be the only one uh, available um a couple of other names though ever alvarado uh he's used as a left central defender in a three-man back line in 2017 but he was injured for this tournament so uh he's probably in the picture as a replacement for uh, the central defenders. Johnny Leveron is, is another one, but he has kind of been on and off with the team, usually used as a sub if he's selected for tournaments uh, at all. And when he has played, he's, he's played as a left back, even though he is coded as a central defender. I'll just uh, mention that the coding uh, I get from kind of a consensus of websites um for their position but then uh, i examined the players in the tournaments and sometimes i change that coding myself for example if they play a certain position with the natural team again and again um it may be a different position than they play with their club team which i imagine is what the coding is mostly based on Anyway, Leveron was here in 2021. He subbed into the first two games and then was uh, a starter in games three and four. He got a goal at the end of game one against Granada. Finally, uh, Elvin Oliver, he didn't uh, make the team, but he's a young player coming in and he's coded as a central defender. So uh, we might see him being used. So that is the central defense. Let's take a look at uh, left backs. And uh, the main names here are Diego Rodriguez, uh, Johnny Leveron, who we just introduced uh, above, uh, plays as a left back. Uh, I believe he came in as a left back in his two starts in this tournament. And uh, other names are Emilio Izaguer and Ever Alvarado. So Diego Rodriguez is uh, with the team just since 2021, even though he's 25 years old. He plays in Honduras, and he started all four games in, in 2021. Um, 
in games one and two, he was a left defender, but then he moved up to the left midfield. So because he's new with the team, maybe they're sorting out uh, what position he is best in. Uh, Johnny Alvarez, yes, uh, sorry, he played as a left back in his two starts in games three and four, and we introduced him above, so I won't... Uh, I won't um, reintroduce him there. Uh, Emilio Isaguer uh, is a veteran with the team. He has 110 caps. He plays with Marathon in Honduras. And um, he was not selected for this tournament. Um, in 2019, he was a left back for games one and two, but then he was dropped for game three. Now, they didn't do well in games one and two, so I wonder if he kind of lost the position and maybe lost his position on the team. Um, he is he he is uh, 35 years old, so um, he probably won't be in the picture for long, and I'd be surprised if he was the starting left back. Uh, during qualifying, but it is possible. Elver, uh, Al Ever Alvarado is another candidate also playing in Honduras. And uh, he was on the team in 2017. He started and finished all games except for game three. He was suspended for that. Uh, but he was only kind of on the bench in 2019. But he did come into game three uh, which he started and finished. They did well in game three with a with a very convincing 4 nothing win over El Salvador. So he lined up as the left back for that game. Uh, he wasn't part of this tournament. He was actually uh, on the squad, but then replaced, I'm guessing due to injury. Um, so he is a possible candidate. He's only 27 years old, so a few years uh, left in him. The right back is very clearly uh, Felix Crisanto. He has been there for years. Uh, um, Ray and Bacalez have sh uh, has shared the position a little bit over the last few cups, but it's mostly Cristiano. Uh, Alvarez has only been used as a central defender, uh, but he is coded as a right back. And Raul Sanchez played out of position as a right back in game four here, but uh, generally is coded as a defensive midfielder. So uh, it seems like Chris Anto was unavailable for game four. So I'm guessing that uh, Raul Santos was uh, used out of position. Sometimes he's called, by the way, uh, Marcelo San uh, Santos. Anyway, uh, a little closer look at Felix Crisanto. Uh, Sorry, I am struggling with that name. Uh, he's been with the team since 2016. Uh, he's 30 years old, so it looks like he got a bit of a late start with the team. Uh, he plays in Honduras, but he was loaned uh, to a team in Mexico. Uh, and he started in 2017, and he was brought in for the third game in 2019. Again, the third game where they had done poorly in games one and two, but uh, did well in game three. And he was in this tournament. Uh, he started games one, two, and three. But then in game three, he subbed out at 61. So I don't remember him uh, going off injured, but... Um, it kind of seems like that may have been the case because uh, for game four, they used an out-of-position player for that. The other candidate here is Brian Bekeles. Uh He uh, is now 36 years old, so he may be on his way out. He's a veteran with 66 caps and with the team since 2010. And uh, he, was, he was the... Uh, starting right back, at least in, in the 2014 World Cup. Um, but I think he kind of moved around his positions, um, especially in the 2015 Gold Cup. He was playing on the left. Uh, in 2019, he started games one and two, but he was subbed out of game two at halftime and uh, relegated to the bench again. Uh, perhaps didn't do well in that tournament because uh, 
uh, they used a different player for game three. Uh, Kevin Alvarez, we've seen for the national team, was only used uh, as a right back, and we've already introduced him. He was the one who uh, came back after five years to play as a central defender. And uh, Marcelo uh, Santos, as I said, uh, stepped into the position, but I don't think he's normally a right back. He's a defensive midfielder. So we'll be kind of looking at his position uh, pretty soon here. So there's the defense. We're going to kind of summarize at the end in a kind of a, a, a default starting lineup. But we'll uh, move to the midfield now. And actually, uh, Brian Acosta is not a defensive well, he is a defensive midfielder, actually, uh, but I've I've coded him myself as a versatile midfielder because he kind of moves around uh, quite a bit. Though mostly he is a defensive midfielder, I think, um, uh, usually in the middle of the pitch. I'm trying to remember if he's on the right or left, but I can't remember. Anyway, he was subbed into game one in the 2021 World Cup and then became a starter uh, after that and uh, he played yeah central to left midfielder here I've just seen my note on it so he's 27 years old he's been with the team since 2014 and is a real um, uh, well I would say a staple in the midfield uh, he was there in 2015 and 2017 uh, but actually in 2000 uh, 19 and 2021 he started as a sub and then gained a starting position in both tournaments so maybe he's not as much as a, uh, a staple uh, as i've made out he also uh, played eight of their 13 games in the lead up to the gold cup so he doesn't seem to necessarily be um the starter we'll move on to defensive midfielders uh, Flores was a standard in this position despite his few caps and Solano played well in game one in the 2021 World Cup but then disappeared and uh, Oscar Garcia Boniak who's aging now uh, did well but he became a sub after game two so it's kind of really up in the air um, uh, who the who the starting position really is uh, Brian Acosta stepped into the role after Boniak uh, left in game two. I don't mean he left, I mean wasn't selected. Uh, and Alvarez and Garrido were both named in 2019, but they only made the preliminary squad here. Uh, Alvarez, though, might be one to uh, take the position in the future. My phone is ringing and I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> Okay, we'll take a closer look at uh, Davy Flores. He's 25 years old and has been with the team since 2015. But uh, this Gold Cup in 2021 was his first tournament. Uh, nevertheless, he played all five of their games before the tournament. Uh, he came back after a two-year absence to do that, um, played all five of their games, and then started and finished all the games in the tournament. So at least for the time being, he seems a bit of a fixture there. Uh, Edwin Solano was uh, a starter in game one, but he subbed out at 80 and uh, left. He did and, and then never appeared after that. So uh, I wondered uh, if he was injured because he did quite well in game one. He scored a goal. Uh, so not much more to say about that. He, he's a candidate. Uh, Oscar Oscar Boniet Garcia is uh, 36 years old and is a veteran on the team. He has 128 caps and has been there since 2005. Uh, I've heard him several times praised for his work ethic, a very hard worker on the field. And he's with Houston Dynamo in the USA actually for almost 10 years now. Uh, he came back in 2020 after a three-year absence, so it seemed like he had retired um, uh, after the 2017 Gold Cup. Uh, and maybe a bit of a shortage of players is the reason he came back. 
Uh, he played as a central midfielder and did really well, but only for two games. Uh, so I'm not sure where uh, he was for the for the following games. Uh, other candidates are George Alvarez. He's a, a young player, uh, 23 years old, I think, 23 years old. And he's been with the team since 2019. Uh, he's coded as a left midfielder, but uh, they they do move around. He was uh, on the bench in 2019 for game one, but started got a starting position uh, for both. Uh, but he was a central midfielder in, in the third game, uh, in game three there. Uh, Luis Garrido is another candidate. He is... Uh, maybe off the team now he's he's 31 years old and uh, hasn't played on, uh, since 2019 he was a starter in 2019 but uh i don't know he was selected for the preliminary squad here but not chosen for the final squad so a bit uh, kind of on the fringes is luis garrido so the two main players seem to be davy flores and Edwin Solano, and of course, Brian Acosta uh, also steps into that role. Now, there's sometimes not much uh, separation between a central midfielder and a defensive midfielder, uh, so they, these roles may overlap. But the player coded as a central midfielder is uh, Edwin Rodriguez, and uh, he played seven of the... Uh, nine games leading up to the tournament and he was on the under 23 team uh, with the two others because he's 22 years old and he's been with the team since uh, 2019 uh, i'm sorry he did not play in 2021 and i wonder if he was with the uh, olympic team so uh, i should have checked into it beforehand but i i didn't but uh, Honduras was involved in the Olympics, so I'm thinking uh, some of the younger players uh, were probably devoted to that tournament. Um, okay, let's take a look at uh, left midfielders. And even though we've talked about uh, Diego Rodriguez as a left defender, uh, he did play in the midfield in his third game in 2021 so this is a position they've never really filled they really haven't used it that much uh, when it is used it's more of an attacking position that uh, is played by a forward uh, but they did actually kind of create that position for rodriguez in games three and four so maybe uh, it's a matter of having the player uh, to fit the bill but uh, they don't have a lot of players who are coded as left midfielders. Um, uh, Diego Rodriguez uh, may be one of them, but he's also a left defender. Uh, other candidates are George, uh, Jorge, or maybe it's Jorge Alvarez. And he has he is uh, 23 years old. Again, he wasn't at this tournament, so maybe he was at the Olympics. But uh, he was on the bench for game one in 2019 but then gained a starting position and he lined up as a left midfielder but only in game two uh he was a central attacking midfielder in game three i i was checking to see if i'm repeating myself because this all sounded familiar to me and sure enough i've just talked about uh jorge alvarez because his secondary role is as a central midfielder so i just talked about him now you know twice as much because i've repeated it uh twice let's move on to michael chirinos i i'm not sure if i'm saying the name correctly but michael chirinos um he was actually selected for the squad here uh but he was injured and left and that actually led to a bit of a problem especially in the last game against mexico where Honduras didn't really have a forward to to uh, to put on the field. So he was on the roster in 2017, but saw no action. In 2019, he was subbed in uh, to game one and then gained a starting position. Uh, and 
we're putting him as a left midfielder, but he's certainly more of an attacking midfielder, often playing more like a left forward role, especially if it's a three-man attack. Uh, he will be kind of more up the field than uh, a midfielder usually is. Uh, with right midfielders, there really is no one coded as a right midfielder that was that would look like a starter for the team. But as with the left midfielder, they've tried a few people out in this position, but they usually go with a winger or a forward. And we'll see that uh, one of their biggest names right now is actually more of a, a winger, but of course can play as a... Uh, as a right midfielder sorry um uh, there are no left wingers either to talk of so we'll move right on to right wingers and the name i've been talking about is uh, albert ellis and he is more of more of an attacking player so um uh right winger is probably uh, a better um a more accurate description of his position uh he is uh there one of their main hopes as a forward here, uh, as a goal scorer, he's 25 years old. He's been with the team since 2014 and has 46 caps, but it seems like before this tournament, like in the few years before this tournament, uh, he's really kind of come into his own. Uh, he was a sub in 2017, but gained a starting position after game one he subbed into game one at halftime and then became a starter and he started and finished uh, all games in 2019 and he's a spicy character with uh, great tenacity and um, i don't think he scored in that tournament as i said uh, they didn't do well. I don't think he was one of the scorers of their four goals in game three, but uh, certainly an influential player when you see him on the pitch. Uh, however, a uh, broken toe put him out of action after game two here. Uh, and I think he had come in um, under a bit of worry because he wasn't fully recovered from uh, a previous injury. I'm guessing that's the reason why he was only a sub in game one. But in game two, he was a starter, uh, but he was subbed out at halftime. So, um, yeah, he seemed to have been struggling with injury without. And again, uh, that led to a real lack of forwards in the final game against Mexico. And speaking of forwards, we'll move to kind of more attacking players, not forwards, but uh, attacking midfielders. So the main man coded as an attacking midfielder is Alexander Lopez. He plays in various positions, sometimes as a full forward and sometimes on the wings, but uh, especially up at the top of the field, uh, Honduras seems to rotate positions around. So... Uh, players can pop up on either side, for example. Alexander Lopez is 29 years old. He's been with the team since 2010, and he plays in Costa Rica for Costa Rica's main team. Uh, he participated in the 2012 Olympics and then was on the squad for the 2013 Gold Cup. Again, he subbed into a... Uh, into game one and then gained a starting position. Uh, but actually, uh, he wasn't selected in 2014, and he was uh, uh, absent in 2015 also and just a sub in 2017. So I think he's playing more regularly now, but uh, it seems like it took time for him to establish his position in the team. Uh, in 2019 he started games one and two but did not appear in game three so maybe um was kind of blamed for those poor performances and didn't uh and wasn't there for their good performance in game three however he was a starter here he started all four games and he got a goal against panama um to to tie up the game uh, and that is uh, Alexander Lopez. I think he will be um, a starter uh, going forward. Let's take a look at the forward line. Uh, secondary striker 
Uh, sometimes they're called forwards. Sometimes they're called attacking midfielders. It's a bit of a, a bit of an elusive position. Except sometimes there are players who really uh, play behind the main forward, uh, but no one, uh, no one is coded that way here. Now uh, we've seen in central defence and in goal that uh, they're a bit short on backup players for those positions. Uh, the opposite is true uh, for forwards. They seem to have a lot to choose from. Um, but I believe the the uh, two names that you see there, Jonathan Toro and Rigoberto Rivas, uh, they were not here. So initially I thought that might be because they were at clubs uh, at clubs in Europe, a lot of European players were reluctant to send their players to the Gold Cup, especially because it was later than the Euro Cup and the Copa America. So it kind of ran into their season. Uh, Rigoberto Rivas plays for Regina in Italy, uh, but he played for Inter Milan. I'm not sure he played that much, but he was with Inter Milan. Uh, between 2017 and 21, although he was loaned out a lot during that time. But that's a pretty prestigious club to play with. Uh, Jonathan Toro is with Huesca in Spain. Uh, they're not a big club, but there is some cash to uh, playing in Europe. Now I'm thinking that they were probably called up to the Olympic team, which is why they weren't available here. So uh, Honduras brought in some players from the cold, meaning that they haven't played for the team uh, for quite a while. And the first one is Jerry Bengston. He was a starter in 2011, and he also uh, started in the World Cup in 2014. But since that time, he was off the team. So he wasn't there in 2015, 17, or 19. Uh, talk about coming in from the cold. He was actually off the team uh, only for two and a half years because uh, he he played sometime in 2018 or 2019. Uh, but he was a starter here, starting uh, the first game and also the fourth game against Mexico. He was only subbed in for the second and third game, but subbed in at 26. Uh, into game three against Qatar, suggesting uh, that that's a sub in for an injury. And definitely uh, that was a problem for Honduras. A lot of their forward players getting injured. So uh, Jerry Bengston, kind of a veteran coming in. He's 34 years old and has 59 caps. He has 21 goals in those 59 caps. Uh, that was 59 before the start of the tournament, so I guess it would be 63 now. And he did get a goal in game one. So I'm not sure why they didn't use him for game two. Uh, Rommel, Kyoto, uh, Rommel uh, um, Kyoto, not sure how, if I'm saying that right. He was the, the forward who came in in games two and three. Uh <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, he was also off the team uh, for a little while. Uh, he he played in the 2019 Gold Cup and then didn't play after that, but then was selected for this team. So, uh, again, uh, maybe because of a lack of forwards or I'm not sure why, really. He was uh, a sub in 2015 uh, and a starter in 2017 and the 2019 Gold Cup, but uh, he lost his starting position in the 2019 Gold Cup. Uh, so uh, maybe he's a bit on the fringes of the team and was brought in here just because of a lack of forwards. But he plays for uh, Montreal, CF Montreal in Canada, and was uh, with the Houston Dynamo in the USA before that. And as I said, he subbed into game one. He scored a goal at 87. It was a, it was the fourth goal of the game, so it wasn't really uh, saving them the win or anything like that. Uh, that earned him the starting position, it seems, for the next two games. And he scored uh, two goals against Panama, so that kind of cemented his position. Uh, he started game three but subbed out at 26, so... 
Um, yeah, I see in my notes here that he was off the field for seven minutes, tried to come back on and then was subbed out. So Bengston uh, kind of uh, replaced him. So uh, again, that kind of uh, explains their lack of forwards when it came to the Mexico game. Mexico, who who were kind of aware of this and scored three goals. Uh, I think they were three first half goals. Uh, and then just kind of took it easy on Honduras, knowing that they were uh, riddled with injuries. One of those injuries is uh, Michael Chirinos, who we've talked about uh, already, and he's actually coded as a forward, but tends to play on the left uh, as a forward, uh, was not available. And finally, Choco Lozano, or Anthony Lozano, he was a starter in 2019, uh, but he didn't play in the third game, and he was on the preliminary squad for this one. Uh, so it looked like he was uh, going to come back, but he was not selected in the end. And then we've talked about the two names there, Jonathan Toro and Rigobert Rivas, who uh, will probably figure in qualifying. Uh, um, Toro played 11 of their 13 games in the lead-up to the Cup, and uh, Rigoberto Rivas played nine of them. So uh, it looks like they're kind of the the main forwards, but they weren't available for this tournament. So there we have it. And we're going to wrap up uh, with, this was actually a suggestion from a listener to uh, wrap up with kind of a, an overview of the team, maybe kind of like a, a starting lineup. Uh, or a, a kind of a prototype starting lineup for the team uh, who we are kind of expect to be in the position. So manager is Fabian Coito. He, he uh, will probably continue. He didn't do badly in 2021 and survived a bad uh, tournament in 2019. Goalkeeper, really, the only uh, name is Luis Lopez, and I fear for them if he were to get injured because they don't really seem to have anyone else among the defenders if henry figueroa is still on the team then henry figueroa and maynor figueroa uh, will be the uh, pillars as they have been for so long but whatever the reason was that henry didn't play in this gold cup uh, Marcelo Pereira looks like the main backup there. And right defender uh, Kevin Alvarez can be shifted into a central role as he was in this 2021 Gold Cup. In the left back position is Diego Rodriguez, but uh, he did move up to midfield. So uh, that position may uh, kind of be open to other players. Um, as a right back, Felix Crescento is the only one there. They did try a new player in in uh, as a right back in game three of 2021, but uh, he hasn't made an impact enough on the team to make our list here. In the midfield is Brian Acosta, and uh, defensive, and he is a defensive midfielder mostly. Davy Flores, Edwin Solano. Uh, our names there, and possibly uh, Jorge Alvarez. Uh, on the left side, we've talked about Diego Rodriguez, whether he ends up playing in defense or as a midfielder. And then not really a midfielder, but more of an attacking uh, player on the left is Michael Chirinos, who was injured, but will hopefully be back for the qualifiers here. Uh, on the right is Albert Ellis, Definitely will be starting if he's fit, but a broken toe um, may mean that he's not available, at least for the September games. Uh, Alexander Lopez, uh, as an attacking midfielder, he's usually uh, in and around the midfield there somewhere. And finally, uh, in the forward line, uh, I would actually put Jonathan Toro and Rigoberto Rivas ahead of Jerry Bengston and Rom Rommel Kyoto. Um, they, those two, Bengston and Kyoto, were kind of brought in for this cup, but I don't think they'll be the forwards uh, going forward. I think uh, 
Toro and Rivas will be the, the main players there. Okay, that brings us to the end of our view of uh, Honduras players. And uh, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.